Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. Uh, I'm here building. Um, apparently, part of my shirt does not enjoy this green screen. Or the green screen doesn't enjoy part of my shirt. Whichever the case may be. Let's try it. Yeah, that's better. You can see it, but it's not as pronounced. Because, uh, whatever. Because where I'm situated. I don't care. It's It'd be a little distracting. I'll be smaller once we start building. You won't even notice. I won't even notice. But we'll both remember. Yeah. Um, I want to say hello to uh, Johnny. Is uh, Johnny wrote, uh, Smash Mouth wrote, I'm going to get popcorn and root beer. Fuck yeah. Runs off. So uh, at some point, uh, Smash Mouth will return. Um, if you're in the chat, uh, throw that bear cave emote. Um, my fear is, the numbers are low right now. My fear is, I tweeted out that today will be the last time that I stream at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, that starting next week, I'm going to start streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And my fear is that people read that wrong. And they read it, I'm going to stream at 9 p.m. Um, because there are normally more than very few of you. So we're going to wait a minute or two before we start building. If it's low numbers, it is what it is. Um, if nobody's watching, then they can watch the archive later. Uh, it would be cool if a couple people were watching because... Um, that I'm not just talking into the void. I'm talking to people, not to the void. Um, for those watching later on YouTube, hello. Those watching right now that are silent in the chat, hello. Um, so we we're working. We're probably gonna finish a kit. Um, there's a very good chance we will finish a kit and start the next one. Uh, hello, Johnny. Welcome back. I hope you got your popcorn and root beer. Um, yeah. So most likely we're gonna finish this destiny exam. Uh, we can go to the wide shot and look at that. Um, the Blue Destiny exam. Um, we're probably going to finish that because it is a um, it is a high grade kit, and there's some sheets left, but really not too much left to do. It'll move pretty fast, um, so I think we'll probably get started a little bit on our next project, which I'm very excited about. Um, it is the uh, the uh, Barbatos Lupus Rex. Um, which is a full mechanics. It'll be the first in the line of full mechanics. There's only a few full mechanics anyway, but it's the only style other than super deformed that we haven't built in our Gundam uh, series. So that's exciting. I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, so we're working on the uh, the exam. Uh, you can see um, we've got a lot of it done. We've got the head, the arms, uh, the feet, uh, chest, uh, the waist, uh, and uh, I did a little bit in my warm-up. I did a little bit of the leg, and I'll keep working on the leg as I build. Um, I hope that uh, a few more folks join us tonight. I hope all everyone who's here now joins me on Saturday. It'll be the last stream of the month, uh, which means that I'll be giving out a model kit. Um, so that's coming. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to to do some building today. I'm going to put this stuff off to the side. So that I have some room to build as we continue to work on our kit. Um, thanks for everybody that's joining me today. Uh, I do uh, uh, one of the lower kit chicken. I don't. Literally, an employee of mine just texted me something that I just. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, there's nothing I can. Like, I have to reply. Okay, use one, like, it's not a big deal, and except that it's annoying. Like, I'm going to pause building to reply to this tweet, to this text. Okay. Not that Will Smith is hosting the stream. Thank you very much for that, Will. Hopefully some viewers will come check it out. Uh, I, no. What you mean? Uh, I'll get a new follower. Uh... uh uh, Kage o Kagoiden, hello. I said your name wrong, and I apologize. Uh, mean, uh, let me know. Uh, no channel is. I'm going to cough. Pardon me. 
<clears throat> I apologize. Very unprofessional. I'm taking texts that are work related. It's mostly just frustrating because it's a text that me is worthless and meaningless to me. Um, and I don't want to deal with it. And it's just like, okay, you didn't have to send that. I don't know why you texted your boss about a thing that is completely and utterly meaningless while you're wasting both our times. I'm frustrated. I apologize. That's unnecessary for this stream. I'm just a little frustrated with work stuff uh, in general and specifically that text, which is just meaningless and unnecessary. Oh, uh, Isk is hosting the stream. Hello, Isk. Thank you for the host. Appreciate it. Um, auto hosting about 10 viewers. I hope a few viewers join in. We're a little, yeah, we're a little light tonight. Um, as I said, starting next Thursday, I will be starting streams at 9 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. That's Eastern, uh, U.S. time. Uh, I'm very excited about that because, uh, I noticed that around nine o'clock, more y'all have jumped in to watch. Um, it's a better time for many folks, not everybody. I know for some people it's not a great time, um, but I hope that uh, uh, for many of you it will benefit uh, y'all that I stream a little later in the day. Okay, so it goes in there, it goes in there. Figure out where this goes. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, this is a high grade, um, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There are a few things that I just don't, that like take a second to kind of, for me to look at, but for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward kit to put together. Um, just like taking a look at it and making sure that I've lined everything up right. Um, and, you know, if this was the bigger master grade, it would take far longer for me to put it together because I would be double checking my work and second guessing myself all throughout so this is a lot easier okay oh johnny says turns out that unfortunately the earth is round so any time will be bad for some folks you're right you're very you're very right uh uh smash mouth johnny uh like, yeah, there's plenty of times that are just not good, uh, especially for you uh, and where you're situated versus where I'm situated. Uh, it doesn't, I don't offer a lot of help for you as far as my schedule. Um, I would like to start doing that afternoon stream I've been talking about. Um, that's something that uh, certainly is a thing that I would like to do starting this year. I'm hoping my Patreon numbers uh, increase enough to justify that. And the, the idea that I would have to purchase so many more kits, which I, I, I would have to if I was streaming one more day a week. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's something that I'm, I'm certainly looking into. And that would be, yeah, that would be an afternoon stream. Uh, the unfortunate things, my country just changed the rules for import fees and suddenly made the hobby a lot more expensive for you. Oh, that sucks, Johnny. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um... Yeah, the, the import tariffs on a lot of stuff um, make it really rough, uh, really, really hard to do. And you end up being like, you end up like having to look at like not the most uh, legal ways to import things. A lot of, hey, if you're traveling from this place, can you pick this stuff up for me? And that kind of thing, which is, you know, not ideal. You want to be above the law on that stuff. And in some instances, that's just impossible to, you know, to make that stuff work. But yeah, it makes an expensive hobby even more expensive when you're dealing with uh, import fees and stuff like that. So I'm sorry to hear that. That's a bummer. Um, all right, so I did this wrong. No, I didn't do it wrong. I just... Okay, so this goes like this, and that goes great. Okay, oh, that came together pretty easy. All right, and then C one, two. 
Uh, Jen says it used to be the only had to pay import fees for goods over a specific cost, and now that automatically apply tariff and shipping and handling costs outside the EU area. Ah, yeah, it makes sense that they it would be like if you're spending a certain amount of money importing things instead of buying it from your own country, it would make sense that they would chip in or kick in. But to do it automatically is is certainly a bummer if you're buying specialty items that you can't just get. Um, and then, of course, any store that's going to be importing that stuff, unless they're dealing with incredible wholesale prices, are going to be paying, the, paying for those tariffs as well and then pushing the cost onto you because they can only eat so many costs. So even if you found a local shop, uh, that wouldn't necessarily solve the problem, would it? Because you'd be, because they would be dealing with the increase in costs as well and looking to, of course, offset that. Ugh. Bad. Bad news. That's a bummer. All right. So it goes in there. There. P6. Okay. You earned some panel lining pens before I knew about this because they were free shipping. I ordered them in multiple separate batches to minimize the cost. I bet that did not minimize the costs. I bet ordering in bulk is now the only way to go. I'm, about, I, I'm sure you're about to tell me. Uh, that ordering, yeah, in batches is, or in bur starts and bursts is probably very cost prohibitive now. One, let's see, one nineteen. Uh, folks that are just joining today, um, we are working on uh, the high grade that we started on Saturday. Uh, this is the first time we've built a high grade on the stream. I bought this at a comic shop that was having a sale, and they did not have much uh, in the way of Bandai stuff. Uh, but I bought this kit. Um, uh, Johnny says the total cost were just a couple of bucks, but import fees are running me like twenty dollars. Oh, oh, awful! That's a lot. That's a lot more than you were expecting to spend. I'm sure. Um, yeah, anyway, so this is a high-grade kit. This is the, um, Blue Destiny t Unit 2, uh, which is called the Exam. It is from a Sega Saturn video game. That's right. This is a model kit based on a video game, um, which is a first for me. It's a first high-grade we've built on the stream. I've definitely built high-grades before in my, in my own time. This is the first time I've done one on a stream. Um, and this is definitely the second time that I've built a model kit, I should say, based on a video game. We did one other one. So this is, this is the second one. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. B1. 10. Okay. Second, like when I saw your tweet, I thought you were building something from the video game Destiny. Yes, you're not that far off. Obviously, the Blue Destiny, uh, you would you would not be um, out there to think that uh, by writing Blue Destiny, you would think of the video game, not the uh, Sega Saturn video game series, which I guess was popular enough that they made it a kit. Which I think is fascinating to me. We've now built something from the PlayStation and from the Sega Saturn. That's very funny to me. Um, all right, so then I need a one ten, uh, which is here. A one ten. But yeah, this is a this is a fun kit uh, so far. It's like a high gear kit. It's obviously pretty easy. Um, and then when we finish this, we are going to get started on our. Uh, our Barbatos, which I'm just going to call the Barbatos. There's a Barbatos Lupus Rex. There's a bunch of variations. It's it's from Iron Blood Orphans, and it's interesting because it's a full mechanics, which, as far as I can tell, the research that I've been able to do, it is a very unique style of kit. It's only an Iron Blood Orphans, and basically it is a 100 scale, which is the scale you're going to build Master Grades at, but it is a high-grade like kit it's not a master grade kit it's like a high grade kit but big same similar to the fact that real grade kits are the one four four scale so they're like the high grade size but closer to a master grade real grade is obviously in between the two 
this is like no bells and whistles. It's just like a pretty straightforward kit. It just happens to be big, which is interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure where that idea came from, but it's kind of an interesting one. All right, so what I'm doing right now is uh, the uh, this is going to be for our um, our beam katana. It's going to sit in there. You can see that. But this itself uh, stores in the leg, which is an interesting place for it. Not in the shield or anything. It's like, or on the back, it's in the leg. So it pops in and like locks in place and I can't figure out. Locking in place is being weird. There it is. Okay. So yeah, so it locks in place. I'll show that there. And then stores on the leg. And I need to A11 and B11. So let me do that first. You've been eyeing that Barbatos' first real Gundam set. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... So here's the thing. It's just got a big sword. And I am a sucker for a big sword and a big gun. Iron Blood Orphans is like a very sad. I mean, it's called Iron Blood Orphans. It's a it's a sad show, uh, and this Gundam is kind of beat up, but it's just so cool looking that I had to give it a shot. Um, B one thirty. I'm gonna pause this for a second as I cough. Not pause, mute it. I should say. Uh, yeah, the weather change is still, allergies are kicking in, and I still have a bad cough. I apologize for that. I've been trying to fight it uh, as best I can, but um, yeah, I'll have to mute myself now and again as I, as I have coughing fits, which is not cool. Um, I'm hopefully going to be able to get over it at some point soon. All right, so this lives like this. Goes like that. There. Just putting some accents here on our leg. That goes in first. Okay. And then this goes in second. Does it? Yeah, like that's great. Okay, it like slides in, basically. Great, did it. So yeah, you wouldn't know, looking at it, that there's a uh, beam katana hidden in here, but there is. That's pretty fun. Uh, I like about Iron Blood Orphans is they aren't using beam weapons. Lasers to cut up another robot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very, like, construction worker kind of show. It's a lot of like, I've got a big sword. Well, I've got this thing that will cut you apart. I've got the jaws of life, basically. Only I'm going to wreck your shit with it. I'm going to cough again. I'm so sorry. Very sorry about that. Yeah. I mean, I would say that um, Iron Blood Orphans is a very like... Um, I mean, it's a rough, sad show. There's so many Gundam shows are obviously very heavy. That they're, they're dramas. Um, even with the lightest of shows, it's still pretty heavy. But that one's like, it's pretty depressing as far as shows go. All right, so we did basically a whole lot here with that with this kit. We're gonna do similar thing on the other leg. We're gonna build our other leg. And there we need. A1 there, B2 and C2. Okay. B2 and C2. Shut that up. And we're basically going to do what we just did, but the other leg. We built one leg, we're going to build the other. Simple, easy, straightforward. Um, I do want to remind people that uh, this uh, is coming Saturday at 9 p.m., my normal 9 p.m. stream. It's the last stream of the month. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, now would be a great time to jump on board. Um, because a subscriber is going to win the Poe Prototype X-Wing. It's a Bandai kit. It was the first Star Wars Bandai kit we ever did. Uh, it's the X-Wing. It's very cool. I'm going to cough again. God damn, I'm so, mad. so sorry. Uh, 
Ugh. I'm going to have to get, uh, I'm going to just have to have, uh, lots of cough drops on Saturday, I think. Because I haven't coughed at all today until I started talking a lot here on the stream. So, obviously, talking a bunch in a row is not helping my cough. Um, but anyway, uh... Yeah, so if you're not a subscriber, now would be a great time to subscribe because what happens is I put all the subscribers in uh, uh, to a random number generator. They're assigned a number in order of that they uh, uh, subscribed. And uh, that goes into random number generators, as I said. And then the winner, um, I will mail kit out to. Um, and uh, it is the, uh, the, yeah, like it says, it's the Poe. Um, so it's somewhere between a high grade and a master grade. It's a very cool looking kit. Uh, I had a great time building it because it, it did feel very different. Um, so yeah, I'll be sending that out um, to somebody, and uh, I, I, you know, I hope it's you. Um, if you've got Amazon Prime, you can link your Amazon Prime with Twitch and get Twitch Prime. I recommend it. It's a good service. Um, even though starting on May 11th, Amazon is going to be charging more. Um, I haven't done the research to find out if they're charging all the people that signed up for a year the difference, or it's the next time you renew it goes up. I do not have the answer to that. I, I should get the answer to that, but I don't have that, that information. But it is going up. I'm still going to keep it because I get so many things from Amazon, um, you know, including, you know, watching a bunch of video stuff like, it's still totally worth it to me. It's not worth it for everybody, but for me, Amazon Prime makes total sense for the, uh, for what I watch and for um, for also having Twitch Prime. It's very helpful. And the amount of kits that I get in the mail because I still, you know, I have my Amazon wish list and still buy a lot of stuff for myself. Um, it makes total sense for me to keep Amazon. But I know for some folks, it'll be like, nah, it's too much. Remember when it was $100 a year? I do. It's going to be more than that. Um, but yeah, becoming a subscriber, I was saying. That's good. Do it. I don't know. It's it's cool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put a B on here. Uh, B2. Got you B2, 12, and 13. Um, let's see. I apologize, yeah, that the, my voice isn't great right now, and that I'm coughing a bunch. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to let it go as long as possible. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, not great right now. My voice is not uh, as sharp as it could be. And then, uh, yeah, I was saying this earlier when we first started streaming. I'm going to be uh, starting at 9 p.m. Uh, on Thursdays going forward. I'm very excited about that. Um, I think it will benefit uh, the people being able to watch because it will start later for folks. And they'll be able to watch more of it because I know a few folks kind of come in and just catch the very tail end. They'll be able to watch more of that, which is cool. And then for me, it will be better because I will be able to um, uh, reach more folks. And I, uh, that was originally, um, that, like tonight I'm going to go to a show that I produce. The reason why it's easy for me to now not go to that is because I'm not going to produce that show anymore. And that is very freeing. Um, it's not a, uh, it's not a secret. Uh, hello Zorbs. Hello and welcome. Not a secret. Um, my subscriptions kind of stalled out. Uh, I think my peak was 30-something. We're now at basically 20, which is, you know, still very good. Not necessarily the growth I've been looking for, but still, like, um, there are a lot of people that are very consistent, which is awesome. Um, but I haven't had the explosive growth uh, that I was hoping for as far as uh, the stream goes. And uh, part of that is when I stream, and the fact I only stream twice a week and, and all that, and looking to see if, um, yeah, adding that third stream in there, uh, third weekly stream, if that makes sense. And can I do it without the support of my Patreon? Because I, you know, can I read you the math? Can I figure that out? Can I make it work? I'm not sure. 
but I do want to keep streaming, and so uh, part of it, part of that is now, you know, start next week, stream later, do 9 p.m., 10:30 p.m. on Thursdays, have more people be able to see me do uh, do my streams. So I think that'll help some quite a bit, actually. Um, yeah, I think it'll I think it'll allow for more people to be able to watch. I know that at nine o'clock we get uh, quite a bit of a uh, bump, and that's a shame that that bump only lasts until I stop streaming like half an hour later. So that that that's disappointing for me. Uh, yeah. You know, I've never wanted to be one of those streamers that just just works and works and works and streams and streams and streams you know we talk about that like 12 hour streamer or the people that stream two times a day they stream five days or six days a week five days a week or every day and they like i that's not me that doesn't make sense for this channel uh my builds would suffer greatly for that um also you know the investment of of kits like i would Oh man, you know, people accuse me of begging uh, for for my Amazon wish list and stuff. I would have to be straight up begging if I uh, started streaming like every day. The amount of kits I would go through would be completely unsustainable. And then also the you know the simple fact that, as you know, I I get a little loopy after an hour and a half. An hour and a half is basically as long as I can keep doing all of this. A game, I can go longer. You know, if I was uh, streaming Hearthstone, I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, Absorbs, it can't be healthy. It's not healthy. Um, like, you know, you're doing everything you can to build an audience and then retain that audience. And, the uh, like, you know, part of the things I love doing is traveling. And I know that every time I only stream once a week, uh, I take a hit. I take a big hit um, to subscribers uh, and viewers that me doing two, doing a show in March and then a show in April hurt me as far as the stream goes. But I also know that for my own self, traveling and going to conventions and doing shows for hundreds of people feels awful. Awesome. Not awful. It feels awesome. It's great. I love it. I love traveling and I'm going to keep traveling. Um so now it's like, well, can I stay in more Airbnbs where I can stream from it? Can I bring gear with me to do that? Is that possible? Instead of staying in hotels, can I, or if I am in a hotel, can I find a good streaming solution while I'm out there? Can I rent, you know, somebody, space from somebody? Can I borrow somebody's, like, uh, st good internet at, at somebody's booth or something? Are there things I can do to make it so that I can, uh, continue to stream when I'm away. So those are things now I'm like, you know, starting to think about more. Uh, Smash Mouth, you said, um, Adam, uh, Kobe, who does, uh, pen and paper RPG streams recently talked about his workload. And it sounds like the kind of thing that would break down a person over time. Yeah. It's not sustainable. I mean, that's the basic gist of what you're saying. And I, a hundred percent completely and totally agree. Um, that's the number one thing that I have witnessed. Even my friends who are like very good at it, they end up taking personal days and they take time off and then they feel bad about taking time off, which is rough that, that, you know, that mentally that they're, that they feel bad. You know, it's like part of it's the, you know, like they're just a, you know, they, they know that some of their fan base, like, schedules their free time around the streams. And, you know, they feel like they owe it to, to folks to, to be on time and to always be streaming when they say they're going to. Uh, you know, every time a couple of my friends go on, uh, go to conventions or do anything, they're hit with, oh, but that, but you're going to be gone when the only time I can watch and all this stuff, like, you know. And it's that thing where you do owe them, uh, not, you know, everything, but you do owe them some things. You you do want to be there when you say you, you know, when you're planning on being there. Uh, and it can be rough. I'm not saying it isn't rough, you know. It's a hard balance to find. 
All right, so I don't know why this isn't fitting in, but I'm, uh, I think, can I clean this up a little bit here? All right. Uh, I'm having a little trouble here with this one piece. I'm not sure why it's not sliding in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, obviously, I built something here that I can't keep doing consistently every day. Like, Lego sets, maybe. I would really have to break up the kind of things that I would build. I would have to do way more streams where I played games or, or you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do the... Whoop. Zorbs just subscribed again. Renewed. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So you said all this talk about subs reminded me to sub. Thank you very much for that, Zorbs. Really appreciate it. That's eight months in a row. Uh, I do really appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I've been lucky. I've had a, a bunch of people that have been, you know, very consistent about uh, being a subscriber and supporting me. Um, and I feel very fortunate for that. Uh, but yeah. Uh... All right. So what's happening is I'm having trouble getting this piece in. Uh, and I need it. It's like basically it's the joint that the leg is attached to. And I don't know why it's not going in. So I am just trimming it down to try to make it a little easier for it to fit in. Um, hopefully that's not going to screw things up when it comes time to attach that to uh, the leg. I want to attach the leg to that. So hopefully we aren't going to have a problem um, when it comes time to get these pieces attached. Yeah, now I'm not. It also might be that I have uh, picked the wrong piece here. I think I might have pulled the wrong piece. Uh, C121. I did. I picked the wrong piece. Uh, that explains why I'm having problems. Um, and in my attempt to fix things, I may have made it worse. See, this is even on not. This is on plenty of sleep, and I haven't done this since Saturday. And I'm, you know, I made that very bad mistake. Uh, so who knows what would be this be like if I was doing this every day? Harold, thank you very much for that. Um, uh, for hosting. I appreciate that very much. Um, yeah, so I uh, I trimmed this down so that it would fit into uh, the peg that it was supposed to, that I thought it was supposed to be in. Turns out I had the wrong thing. So now I've trimmed this so it doesn't actually fit well. And this leg is going to be uh, sloppy when it comes time to uh, attaching it, uh, which is bad. going to be rough. And yeah, yeah, this is going to be, uh, this is actually going to make this bad. I might have to put some glue in here um, and just have the leg be kind of like frozen in place, which is, you know, which is always a, always an option. Uh, Last Cody is now following. Thank you very much, Last Cody. I appreciate that. Harold, it's great to have you in the chat. Yeah, as always, thank you for your continued support, Harold. Um, very, very kind of you. Um, all right, so now we're going to put that in there, and that goes on here, and then we're basically going to put the armor on like we did on the other side, and we will get, uh, close to being done with this kit. Uh, we need, this is A1, we need A11 and A111. One and a one eleven. Which is this piece here? Great. Got it going. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, you can do anime talk. Uh, Comic Girls continues to be the show that I am most interested in uh, of any of the uh, shows that I've been watching. Um, this last one didn't focus on chaos, 
uh, Kaus, which is the main girl in the show, which is probably for the best because she is very, um, she's very down on herself. She's very main character in anime, like doesn't think she's worth it or worthwhile. Um, and uh, although she does get to have chances to shine because she knows how to set up a computer for Mongard. So it's really fun. The really uh, this episode focuses a lot on uh, uh, Rukia, who is the manga artist who started drawing stuff cute, but found out ac kind of accidentally that she has a talent for uh, more adult situations, more love stories uh, with a lot of censorship bars in them. And so she ends up, uh, that's what she writes, and it's kind of focusing on that and her embarrassment about it and fans that want to see her. And it's a good episode. It was a. Uh, they did a montage, uh, which was really fun of seeing them like be together and be friends in a way that I really like. Uh, it's a good show about friendship. Yeah, it's a. It's a pretty horny show, but of course it is an anime, so that's not the biggest surprise in the world. But uh, yeah, it's a. It, it is pretty. It's pretty interesting as far as like the stories of uh, of manga artists go. Uh, yeah, so that, that's a pretty fun show. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. Um, I'm going to keep watching. Uh, Gigi no Kitaro is still very good. It's it's still really interesting and engaging. Um, I, uh, you know, like I'm still keeping up. Like I said, there's some shows that I'm not watching yet because I'm waiting to kind of watch them all in, in a burst. Um... There's a couple things I'm going to check out for Saturday. Um, there's a uh, show about a um, Johnny. That's just wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a show uh, about like a section of Japan as if it's like the wild, wild west or like weird uh, gunma. Like you don't know gun. You don't know about gunma. I think it's called. Um, that sounded kind of interesting. I haven't watched it yet. Like I said. That's the thing that I'm interested in checking out. All right, so all right, we gotta go over here. We're gonna build. Uh, we're gonna build our backpack up, and we're gonna assemble our kit here, and then we're gonna build the weapons. But yeah, uh, oh, Harold sent me uh, uh, some cheer. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Harold. Uh, jump that leaderboard there with that. Um, yeah, I, uh, okay. Um, build two sets of these. We're doing with A. Um, A42. Yeah, I'm mostly just like kind of go through the motions. I had a lot of, uh, this past week, had a lot of catching up to do and other content, so I wasn't watching so much anime. Um, you know, it's like uh, trying to keep up with a bunch of things. I, I watch a lot of Polygon content, and I watch a lot of uh, um, Giant Bomb, of course. Uh, I'm still behind on some things because people do daytime streams, and I'm if I'm busy, I don't get to watch them. And then they do, you know, I'm trying to watch them at night and get re caught up, and, you know, I'm just not, you know. Some of these channels are going pretty hard on the streaming everyday thing and it's hard to keep uh, up uh, Gil and Gilbert I still have to watch from yesterday so hopefully I'll be able to catch up on that but that is also a uh, a stream that I kind of put on sometimes or the archive of it in the background while I'm doing other things but I do recommend it it's it's a very fun series they usually do a game and then have some sort of challenges and then also do other quick segments they're very funny gentlemen being funny they're allowed to do the funny stuff so, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I would recommend that show. Gil and Gilbert. It, it, Smash Mouth, it, uh, Johnny, it is very hard uh, uh, to get, watch Giant Bomb between the two coasts. Yeah, like, I finally finished up um, uh, Breaking Brad. Finally finished that up. Uh, that took a while for me to have the time to do. Uh, so, I was happy to get that that to get that done and then it was like the uh abby's uh sim series i just finished today 
that like I thought I was gonna have more time to do that and just I'm got lucky that I, I found the time to get it done. Um Okay, and then I need um uh B thirty one and B thirty one. Yeah, it's hard to keep up, you know. You try, but sometimes you can't you can't do you can't get it all done. There's just only so many hours in the day for all your entertainment. Like I don't watch every quick look, you know. Uh oh, loading ready run. Yeah, th that's another channel. Like I check out some of their stuff, but I don't watch a lot of it. They have a new uh show. Well, the problem with sketch comedy is eventually you, you you run out of things to write about. And you have to be you have to have constantly have new experiences to to kind of you know, pull from. And then especially if you're like trying to be topical, forget it. If you're trying to be topical, then that's a chase that you have to do and it's like it can be a nightmare. Um it is a it is it is a tough gig. So I can understand why some people kind of move from sketch into like riffing on current events because there's a lot more or pop culture because there's a lot more fertile ground there. So it can be not easier, but it can be like uh, a more uh, beneficial experience. And also the, so one of the things that people don't really, uh, hello, the hollow, um, uh, uh, so uh, the big problem with, um, with sketch groups is that like, uh, the internet doesn't understand what sketch comedy is. Like they just, like it knows what SNL is and it remembers Mad TV, but it, but when you do a video, people legitimately will write fake Yes, this is a fake thing. It's a it's a comedy piece, and they just can't understand why you're lying, why you're pretending. Like they, like well, my my friends when when they started Derek, which was at the uh, beginning of YouTube, right? Is there NYU students? Very funny gentleman. One of them's Han Solo, uh, or he's Lando, not Han Solo. He's Lando in the Solo movie. Um, so Derek was a improv group that started writing sketches, uh, and they um, they at the heyday of YouTube or the beginning of YouTube they were like oh we'll have a YouTube channel, and they were very smart to write comedy. They wrote Derek comedy was the name of their channel, so it says comedy in the name, and their film still got fake. And it's not ironic when people write fake, because a lot of the other popular content on YouTube were like vlog stuff were like to the webcam in a room this is what who I am blah 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 oh I'm actually zany I'm putting on a funny voice haha ha, look at me and people thought that was just real like they didn't understand that people were like acting so it's the silliest thing but people don't understand what jokes are so it's it's, it's it's tough to do sketch comedy on the internet. Mystery Team is a very fun movie. It's a very fun first movie, but it is it is a is a fun endeavor. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I remember my uh, my friend Eliza, who's a very talented actress was doing character work. She was just doing like two camera character work. She would be in a costume and was doing like character monologues, which is like a staple of live comedy, live sketch comedy, uh, is character monologue stuff. It's very basic, simple stuff. Um, and I remember it was like, people were just like mad at her characters, but not, I don't know how to describe this. They weren't mad at the character like, this character is awful. Or this character is mean. They were mad at her, like like it was real. Like if she was playing a character that like threw up on herself at a party, they would be like, they wouldn't go like, oh, I hate people like that. They'd be like, you're stupid. It's like you're 
you're sloppy. And it's like, no, 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 she's, she's an actress. This is, this isn't real. Uh, I don't know. I mean, when I say like, they, they think of SNL when they think of sketch comedy, like, I think mainly it's that people don't know, like, obviously I, I know this because I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been doing comedy and, and live comedy for a very, very long time. So I'm very aware of this thing, but people don't know that there's other kinds of comedy um, besides stand-up. Uh, you know, it's like, when you say like, oh, I'm a comedian, they're like, oh, you do stand-up. You're like, no, not at all. I don't do any stand-up. I'm not a stand-up comedian. I'm a comedian. Uh, Gavzika, Gavziki, just subscribe. Thank you so much. I apologize for uh, once again butchering your name. But yeah, there are people who just don't know that there are other forms of comedy that exist. Like they have no, no understanding and no concept of that. Uh, they cannot make heads or tails of it. So SNL is like, a thing you can say that people will go, oh, because even like a comedy actor, they'd be like, oh, it's comedy actor. Oh, I, I know comedy actors and they name like, it's like, no, not John Hamm. John Hamm's not a comedy actor. John Hamm's an actor who likes being in comedies. He's not a, he's not a comedy actor in the same way that like, you know, somebody who's been on SNL for eight years. Keenan Thompson's a comedy actor. You know, it's this weird thing. Uh, it's very strange and a hard thing to describe. I'm probably not doing it justice. Uh, the frustrations. I wonder if it's merely the internet that's allowed us to see the reaction. It's not new. Um, it is a it is a weird phenomenon. Um, I think that just like people don't like just don't know it's just a lot of it's they just don't know and that's not like i'm not mad i'm not i occasionally am frustrated like if i say that i'm an improviser uh which i am uh people are like oh tell a joke and it's like i'm, I'm not i'm not a stand-up comedian uh of course it doesn't make sense that like very famous stand-up clubs are called the improv which Believe me, uh, it's a pet peeve of mine. I can't stop that, but it is actually somewhat confusing that if I say, like, I do improv. like, But I also don't expect people to know about the various the improvs uh, as stand-up clubs. Um, all right, so we're going to build a... Uh, we're going to build a machine gun here. Um, so we'll do that. And two... two, two. Uh, but yeah, I mean, most of the part, like, I'm not, I'm never really mad that people don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, stand up ruins everything. I mean, sub stand up does ruin things pretty, pretty bad. Um, not all stand ups, not all stand up, I should say, uh, or all stand up. Um, all right, we're building a gun here. I think it reminds me of how a lot of people on the internet think they can be uh, the next George Carlin by just being an edgy asshole. Oh, oh uh, yeah. I mean, most people like don't. Well, a thing that ends up happening is um, uh, with uh, people who are famous on YouTube for being funny. People that do character work, that do sketch comedy. Um, that, that that came they came up through the internet. Uh, a thing that they learn pretty quickly is they do not have the tools to do it on the road, live, in front of an audience. Um, they haven't been trained to do it. They don't have uh, stage presence. They have internet presence. Uh, and that's a very different thing. It's a very different tool. Um, uh, same way that, you know, sometimes people can be very entertaining in a room uh, in front of a microphone or in front of a camera, but you put them in front of 50 people and they freeze. People that are very funny and, and very uh, adept at being uh, interesting suddenly clam up uh, because it's a different experience. Um, I think the person who has adapted the best is Bo Burnham. Um that's an internet, you know, person who does very well on the road and, you know, does bring in an audience that doesn't necessarily go to comedy clubs, but like 
um, Bo is like, you know, has really uh, adapted well to uh, to live performance. Uh, I think a lot of people haven't been able to do it um, because, yeah, they just you know they never had the experience. It's a it's a difficult thing. It's not it's there's nothing easy about. Uh, performing live and the same way that a lot of people who are very good at uh, live performance stuff can't crack the internet they can't figure out how to make the internet work and how to get you know people to look at their stuff because they just don't have practical experience with it um i have some experience with, with that you know like with both and it certainly benefits me greatly uh that's why I like you know um yeah Bo is uh Bo is started out as an internet person um got famous on the internet and then parlayed that into uh funny songs you know just making funny songs and funny videos and then parlayed that into a uh, st stand-up career and a live performance career but yeah started as an internet person um is probably yeah one of the more successful people to make that transition um but yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, like I can do a show uh, at, uh, you know, when I do a show at a, at a PAX, I'm never really worried about my performance because I have years and years of uh, live theater experience, you know, and it's obviously jumping up the scale, like, you know, doing improv for 13 somewhat uninterested people is very different from doing uh, a show for 600 people. Like, that's a different thing. But a lot of it's still similar, you know? Uh, getting zero laughs is way different from a bunch of people who are just very excited to see me, uh, which I get at a, at a PAX. You know, less than other people, obviously. There are plenty of other people that get that way more than I do. Um... All right, so we'll put a gun on his arm there. We got the gun done. Um, got another weapon here we can build. Um, yeah, there's plenty of people that, you know, like just, that's not their thing. Three people is not enough to make a living online. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Johnny, I mean, I'm obviously like, you know, I'm in somewhat of a similar boat, as you know. Uh, uh, my numbers here are... Uh, I've been able to retain certainly pretty well, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not growing as fast as I would, would like. And there are things I can do to kind of make that um, better that I'm looking at doing this year to kind of make sure more and more people know uh, that I'm out there and that I'm doing stuff. I'm uh, attempting to do more of that and promote myself a little bit more uh but it is a it's a hard thing the internet is a, is a tough one um yeah it's like a bunch of people that like coming to see me live and getting them to also watch me on the internet is is not the easiest thing but also like you know very happy for all 13 of you that tuned in to watch today uh i was also happy when there were six of you started at eight um that was also very nice uh but yeah i can remember doing you know, uh, doing an improv where there were more people on stage than in the audience and the other team, you know, the team that was hosting the show was in the bar and not watching and we had come early so we could watch the other groups and you, you just go home and then, you know, you take a cab home because it's very late and you're just like, well, that was such a waste of my time, energy and money. Uh, it was very funny on, in the moment and we laughed at each other, but was it worth it? Um, it's like that, that it can be very tough. Uh, so I've had plenty of that in my life. So it's just like, okay, I didn't hit the numbers I would like to tonight. Okay. Keep going with it. Um, you know, no one's got any secrets when it comes to doing this stuff online, but the number one thing that I know for a fact is you just have to keep doing it. Um, if you have any, if you want to have any shot at succeeding, you have to con be consistent. Uh, Pax panels are kind of cheating. Yeah, I mean, so it is a little bit of a cheat. 
uh, in that it's a built-in audience. But that's like any convention. Any convention has a built-in audience. It's just getting that audience to come see you. Um, the uh, uh, celebrity, uh, uh, not celebrity, the Secret Hitler game that I played with Oni had a very low attendance at Emerald City Comic Con because that's not a panel culture. People don't go to night panels there. Um, we probably could have done better than we did, but we still did good for the room. But it was like, compared to the other audiences I had, it was like, this is, you know, nothing. Because PAX, like, has a panel culture. People want to go to those panels. New York Comic Con has a panel culture. There's like... A lot of people go to those. So it kind of depends on that. But you still have to, like, do something that people want to go back to and people want to see again. Um, that's still an important element uh, to it is uh, is making stuff that people want to see. And I have the benefit of having a lot of experience. Um, uh, I have a lot of live experience. Um, people that do my panels say that, you know, like I send them emails and I'm on top of things and I do lots of planning um, because I'm a show producer. I've produced shows consistently since 2004. Um, so I'm very, uh, pr I'm pretty adept when it comes to constantly working on uh, shows and, and getting things up to snuff and being prepared and knowing the room and, Four or it has always worked. Uh, occasionally, the Twitch or uh, you know stream has been uh, chaotic um, on their end, but on my end, it's always worked because I'm a producer. I know what I need to do to get my show to work. Because if the laptop or the iPad doesn't communicate with the projector, I don't have a show. All right, so we got another gun here. Um, we could uh, we could put that on. I kind of like this gun that we built here, so we'll keep that aside, and we're gonna build our shield. Um, it's 9 p.m. I'm going to do a quick little bit. We'll get back into building this here. But uh, it's now time to talk about how... Hey, uh, if you're not subscribing right now, it's a great time to subscribe. On Saturday, I'm going to be doing a raffle. Anyone who's a subscriber will be able to be part of that. Uh, another way you could support me if you wanted to would be to join my Patreon. I'm a little under $100. I'm trying to get to $100. Uh, I am a pro. Thank you, Harold. Uh, trying to get to 100 on my Patreon. 150, I should say. Trying to get to $150. When I get to $150, I'll be able to stream three times a week. Uh, this kit I bought in a store. Many of the kits that I uh, that I make on stream are bought off my Amazon wish list. Uh, you could buy something off my Amazon wish list if that's something you'd like to do. Um, there's also some gear at the bottom that would help me stream. That's also something. Uh, and if one time, if you're just like, hey, I can't, I can't subscribe on Twitch. Uh, my free coin goes to someone else. Uh, I don't have the money. I can't monthly consider you. But, hey, I just got my uh, money back from uh, do my taxes. So uh, I can float you a couple of dollars. I have a coffee. That's another way. Uh, as I said, I'm doing the this Saturday, 9 p.m., probably about 9.15 I'll do it. I'll do the drawing, and someone will win the uh, Poe Prototype X-Wing, which is a very cool kit. And... Uh, so that'll be on Saturday. And then next Thursday, I'm going to stream 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And that'll be how, how I stream from now on on uh, Thursdays. So Thursday and Saturday, I'll be streaming at the same time. Uh, not like one hour earlier on Thursday. Uh, that's starting next week. Obviously, tonight, I did the normal. That's it. We got another half an hour of uh, building. We're going to build. I'm going to, we're going to wrap this up, and we're going to start on our next kit. Um, so I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm going to pop these out here. We're building our shield, which can be go on the arm. I just had a piece fly away from me. I'm going to see if I can find it. I mean, I'll find it eventually. Oh, I found it. And it's attached. It fell on my green screen. Oops, there it is. That's the thing with the 144 scale like this is sometimes the pieces are very small. You can see that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but panels for four is your job to more giving other people space to be funny than it is being funny yourself, right? So, uh, Johnny, that's actually a very interesting uh, uh, thing you brought up there. Um, so I do have several jobs when it comes to um, 404 it. It is about leaving room for people to be funny. But also, I know what all the videos are, and some of my guests are 
very funny and I can just let them run with it. Other guests kind of need to be poked and prodded. Um, you know, uh, you might see a 404 where I ask questions of my guests. Um, I ask like leading questions because I know they have something funny to say, but they need a little poke in the right direction. Or they need a little encouragement. Um, I also do write lots of jokes for that show or, you know, uh, go through a bunch of different, uh, uh, you know, variations of things that I think would be funny to say. Um, I do a lot of prep for, for, for a show like 404 in it. Um, obviously a show like Improvised Postmortem, um, I have, you know, it's all improvised, it's all off the cuff, and that's really about letting my guests shine and just giving them opportunities to be very funny. But that's not necessarily a lot of, like, I don't have to do a lot of work for that. Where I, for for it, you know, sometimes you gotta. Someone like Brad Shoemaker. Brad Shoemaker is very funny, but Brad Shoemaker occasionally needs a, a setup here and there. Like, would you say this? Would you say that? And then, like, let him say the thing that he wants to say in, in the moment. Uh, whereas other people, you don't have to do any of that. Jeff Gersman's going to get his jokes in. Jeff Gersman is a professional. Uh, he's gonna he's got his bits that he wants to say. He's gonna get those in. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, there's some people that are like you know. I mean, nobody's a professional comedian that does these shows. That does panels at like packs or whatever. You know, everybody's just like funny individuals doing their funny thing. So. Sometimes, yeah, you just got to give them room to, to have fun. Convo support. It's, uh, yes, uh, that is a very tough skill. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Jeff is just an entertainer. Jeff has, has the ability, you know, um, Jeff has the benefit of years of, in high school, working on a public access show. So he got to be very bad in front of very few people for a while, uh, which is why it explains why he has such a, you know, he's just a genuinely funny person. He's very funny, but he also had like a chance to fail and we didn't see him fail uh, because he, uh, yeah, he didn't fail in front of us. So we didn't have to worry about it. He failed uh, in various places, in various stages that we'll, ne we'll never see. They're all on probably they probably all are on a tape in someone's basement. But we don't have to look at those. All right, so that's our kit. Uh, there's still some, you know, obviously pieces left over here and there that I'll take care of later. Basically, there's a version where you can take the backpack off. There's uh, there's a different way of holding the shield if you want to hold the shield differently. You don't have to do it like it is like it's set up in here. There's a bunch of different. Uh, variations of this kit but that's the gist of it it is after all just a uh high grade kit but yeah it's pretty good pretty good kit um i'm gonna put this away and then we're gonna work on the next project uh it is very important in pen and paper to to listen and support if you're doing uh the kind of uh streams uh you know, if you're doing a, uh, a live play session with people, especially for performance wise, not just for yourselves, but for people who will be listening later um, or listening live, it's very important to active listening is incredibly important. Setting people up. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, like. I don't think it's even that secret, um, uh, Johnny, that people who are doing like. Sorry, I'm going to cough. Uh, I apologize. It was a while. I lasted a while. I'm back. I'm back. All right. It's no It's no secret. Uh, we got we to switch. Barbatos. There he is. There it is. I don't know why I gendered that. Unnecessary. Uh, so we'll put this to the side. A kit. We've got some new... New pieces. This is uh, we'll talk about in a second, but yeah, we got a new new kit to build. Um, the art from this is is like like not cell cell shaded, but it's it's different. It's interesting. Um, I mean, a good GM or DM or whatever is someone who is 
Uh, so yeah, so look at this art. Like this is interesting the way they're doing this. Um, a little different from your normal uh, book. Um, yeah, I mean the player kind of plays along, and then the GM is an improviser. Uh, um, so one of the ideas for this is uh, is that you're much like the real grade. You're building the skeleton. And then you're building the armor around it. So you could do it just as a skeleton with no armor, and it would be interesting. Uh, there is a lot of English in this, which is which is always kind of nice uh, change of pace. And it is basically is a size is the one one hundred scale. So this is the one four. This is one one four four. Right is a tiny kit. The one one hundred is usually what we build when we build master grades. So that's a bigger kit. So this is going to be the normal size but it's not a master grade it's the full oh sorry my voice cracked there full mechanic full it's the full mechanics uh full mechanics interesting all right so let's uh let's get building here um so I need d oh yeah let me put this here so yeah it's uh the pieces are going to be you know, a little bigger um, in the same way, like, uh, for example, like this could be in a master raid, this would be three or four pieces. But in this kit, it's not uh, full alchemist. Uh, yeah, um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm I've never built this kind of kit. As far as I can tell, it's only for Iron Blood Orphans. Um, they have not done it. And they did a year of building them before they na they kind of coined the name. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, I'm excited to do, to do a kit that like, you know, I haven't done before. Um, or, or not, not the kit itself, but the, uh, style of kit. That's interesting to me. We'll see what happens. Um, all right. So we're starting with the body frame. Um, looks to be, uh, Variations of like the cockpit area here. So we'll start with this. Yeah, my voice is kind of uh, uh, flailing here, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, we're doing the skeleton frame, and then you just kind of start building pieces up and out. And um, six here. A lot of little English text here, which is nice. As uh, as I said. Pretty rare. T twenty three. Um, I didn't say this tonight. I usually do. If you're working on any kits any time of the day or night, anytime, not just when I'm streaming. If you're working on anything, please, please let me know. Uh send me tweets. Uh let me know what you're working on. I love hearing about it. Um uh, and I always retweet when people are Working on kits. I love sharing that. It's very fun for me. But yeah, if you're working on anything while you're, you know, while you're watching, while you're listening, that's always cool to share. Please never be afraid to let me know when you're working on a kit. Because it's awesome. Okay. Huh. This should slide right in. Call Pat on his cell anytime, day or night. Yeah, callers are, operators are standing by. We want to hear from you. No, I don't have a call in line. All right, so we got that on. It's a, uh, this is a this is a kit that like I know kind of well, but not super well. Um. It was a good question that got asked um, uh, that I appreciate. Like, well, what do you look at for in a kit that you're not familiar with if there's a show you? Because, you know, there's Gundam shows I've never seen. It's definitely, you know, or like kits that are based on, uh, uh, you know, video games, something like that. And like I said, I like a big sword. I like a big gun. Big weapons are very appealing to me because they're fun to build. Uh, but like that kit that we bought there, right? That was just a happenstance. This kit is something that like the first thing is the big sword uh, drew my attention. But then the follow-up is that it's a style of kit that I haven't built yet. And uh, 
In the same way that I'm hoping that either people buy from my wish list or I purchase myself, I am in the mood to do Lego. It has now been a little bit since I've done some Lego. Uh, I've done several kits in a row that I wouldn't mind doing a Lego kit. Uh, not that I'm bored with doing this, but it is fun to mix it up now and again and work on a kit that I haven't worked on. So I wouldn't mind uh, jumping in to a, uh, a Lego kit to mix things up. I like mixing things up and trying different kits and trying different stuff and, you know, challenging myself to figure it out as I'm streaming it and talking about it kind of as we go. Um, Johnny, you know, we're going to kit because you don't have the room that to do that by your computer, but I'm think, uh, tinkering with the plans for a custom arcade. Yeah, uh, Johnny, I know you've been talking about that, uh, you know, that you were working on uh, that idea of working on a, um, an arcade stick. Yeah. I've never built an arcade stick because I've never been a fighting game person. Um, you know, I played Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all that because uh, that's what my friends played. Um, and, you know, if you're in an arcade with your friends, you want to play the games they're playing. Um, but, uh, oh, was I so excited when my friends and I all fell in love with DDR because I wasn't necessarily great at DDR, but I was okay. I was pretty okay at DDR. I could hold my own. I could do some stuff. I could play some tricky songs. I had some pretty good footwork for a guy my size, uh, even at the time, um, that I, I was very happy when we, we started doing DDR. Um, because I was never, never going to be good at fighting games, no matter how much I tried. So yeah, so I never had a home, home uh, arcade stick. I was just had the closest I've had to an arcade stick was I had an NES Advantage. That is the closest thing to an arcade stick that I've ever owned. Um, so yeah, so I've never, never even considered building one because I've, you know, never needed one. Need to have a DDR solution in your home at some point in the future. Yeah, I mean, you can buy a USB. Uh, so there are there are adapters that will adapt any DDR pad to make it USB. And there's also a couple native ones. The really expensive, great ones are incredibly expensive and, and good. Um, and then there's like some cheaper ones. I have like a pretty cheap DDR pad that I don't use that often because I'm on the second floor. And I uh, currently uh, weigh a lot. So I don't want to um, dance my heart to my heart's content while on the second floor of an apartment. Um, but I am at some point I will most likely uh, uh, do it again. Uh, get get more into DDR uh, again. And uh, there's uh, Step Mania is a freeway program that's pretty much DDR um, that I I remember enjoying a lot and thinking was pretty good. Uh, you have the Mario DDR for GameCube. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, whether it means building my own solution or just getting a cheapo pad for the PS2. Yeah. Uh, I've heard been doing custom paint jobs or nerf things like that. So, um, uh, the custom nerf stuff, uh, Gav, uh, I, I do like a lot. Um, uh, what, what was I going to say about that? Um, so I, I don't really paint that much. That's not my thing per se. I did, uh, work on a, a horror show, uh, for many years, uh, here as part of my day job. Um, as a, as a, I worked on rigs, like exploding rigs for, for deaths and such. Um, so I did a bunch of that. And so I did have to like modify some weapons to look more real or to add, uh, wear and tear to it. So I did a little, I dabbled in that a bit, but I haven't done a lot of uh, customization. You know, like I've watched a lot of video on it and I have a pretty okay understanding of, of, of weathering and that kind of stuff. But I, I haven't had any like, re you know, real world applications. I, I did modify my Nerf gun to make it more, um, to make it, e back in the day, I had like a, you know, I forget the name of it, but it was, it was a good, gun um the side loader but i made it easier i modified it to make it easier for me to reload it 
because at the time I was in a, I need to see one here again. Uh, I was in a, like an assassin's game. And so I needed to augment my, um, let's see, 20 and 21. Yep. I had to augment uh, my nerf gun to make it a little easier to, to reload it. Uh, tournament. I don't doubt that there are tournament grade DDR pads. There is still a tournament scene. I don't know. I wonder if there are like if there are competitions that are like home pad uh, or arcade machine only, uh, or if it's all arcade machine. That's actually that's interesting. Uh, you can currently get a tournament grade DDR metal one for two hundred bucks. Yeah, the last time I was looking, that's about what it was. I think I got like a sixty dollar pad that is USB ready. That's like fine, and I ended up like, you know, gaff taping it to the floor so it didn't slide around. I think that was the solution I ended up with, which was you know worked out pretty well for me. Wasn't the best, but it worked out pretty good. All right, um, got this going on here. All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna connect these two here, and then we're gonna probably call it quits for the night. Um, I'm going to basically connect these two pieces together uh, into one piece. This body frame uh, took a little longer to finish up the real grade kit than I would have thought, and um, we still got it done, and that's good. But uh, I thought we'd be a little farther in this, which is okay. Fine with that. Would have been worse if I hadn't planned to start building this and had to like open up all the sheets and get organized and figure out what I was going to build and all that. So I'm glad that we at least started it. Um, I need three. But yeah, my next stream will be um, yeah, no, I mean great DDR pads, great metal home DDR pads are not cheap by any means. At a certain point, you're maybe better off just getting an arcade cabinet, uh, which is never a good idea, and I don't recommend. Oops. Unless you're very good at servicing arcade machines, or you know someone who's very good. And then, especially with DDR, which is like its own, it's like getting making sure the pads are being serviced properly, that's its own, uh, its own special skill, I'm sure. But yeah, um, on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, we will continue to build this. I'm going to uh, stop this in a moment or two here. Um, kind of get what I need done here. And then I got to put together one more of these little sections here. Uh, D19. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see some of you on Saturday. If you're a subscriber, you're automatically entered you don't have to be there live obviously i'm not doing that part of it uh um but i am uh, gonna do a raffle on saturday you know sometime around nine and one of my current subscribers will win uh the poe uh a prototype x-wing which is a fun kit um uh, 29 28 yeah, I'm excited to give that away, and I'm I'm happy to start doing this to continue to do this monthly thing of uh, sending kits off with to people. It's very fun for me. Um, all right, so we put this on this. I'll put this on like this. Hmm. Aha. Figured it out. Great. And then this goes on here. Sometimes I... You know that I'm... It's towards the end of the stream where I just start saying here and this goes like this and stuff like that uh, that I have started to lose steam. Because uh, I start just saying whatever in inc incomplete sentences. Um, 
but also like when I don't know how a thing actually works. Sometimes I fill in the pauses in the conversation with just, you know, filler words. Not real thoughts, just things, just talking. Great. Okay. So we got this done. This is coming together. This is like our body here, our, our you know, shoulders and our, uh, our neck. So we've got that going on. That's pretty good. And that's, uh, that's going to do it. Um, I want to thank everybody that, uh, watched today. I hope you come back on Saturday at 9 PM Eastern. Um, uh, this has been the Build with Bear workshop. Uh, Johnny, keep going with your with your with all your projects, uh, your arcade projects. I think that's awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you can join me Saturday 9 p.m. Thanks for watching. Starting next Thursday, I will be streaming uh, as I said at 9 p.m. Eastern every uh, Thursday from now on until things change. Uh, but that's gonna do it. Uh, Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday or your Friday or whatever day it is for you, if it's Wednesday for somebody. Um, and I will see you again on the next Build a Bear Workshop. Thank you all so much.